Okay guys, so remember I said I'm going to speak about um, the key points on this graph. For example, the intercepts, the turning points and the inflection point. And that's exactly what I'm about to do in this video. Now, first of all, we're going to address the question. Why is it that when we are working out a turning point, do we say that the derivative has to be equal to zero? So first of all, I want you to think about this. What is a derivative? Now, I know I've mentioned this in a previous video, but maybe you forgot. A derivative of a function is simply the gradient of a function. Now, basically what we are saying here is at the turning point, at the turning point, the gradient of the function is zero. Now, let's see if that's true. This function is well it starts out increasing if I were to draw a tangent next to the function you can see the tangent is on an well it's facing upwards and to the right which means it's an increasing function and then as we go all the way to the top all the way to the turning point realize how this line flattens okay so it flattens and eventually at the turning point the gradient is zero after the turning point you can see it's starting to go downwards. We have a negative gradient. And then after the inflection point, it's starting to increase again and zero again. And after that, we go into the positive gradients again. So here on this end and on that end, we have positive gradients. In the middle, we have a negative gradients. And obviously between the positive and the negative, we end up with these gradients that are zero. Okay, so right here, at the turning, oops, my arrow is pointing to the wrong spot. Um, right over there at the turning point, the gradient is zero. And over here as well, the gradient is also zero. I guess we can say for this section, the gradient is greater than zero, as well as this section greater than zero. And then this middle section, this is where the gradient is less than zero. Okay, so that's number one. Number two, I guess, is what is an inflection point? Now, I just realized I didn't even plot my inflection point on the graph, so let me go ahead and do that. The inflection point was uh, 4 over 3, which is slightly bigger than 1, and it was 10.6, so just a teeny tiny bit higher than 10. So we have the 4 over 3 and 10, comma, well, 10.59, I think. Uh, but anyway, if you want to write the fraction, which is a more accurate version, you're allowed to do that as well. So the point of inflection is over there. As you can see, it's like right in the middle of this graph. Okay, so it's in between the two turning points of the graph. In fact, directly in the middle of those two points. If you work out the midpoint for these two x values, the x values at the two turning points, you will actually end up with the x value for the inflection point. Okay, now the inflection point, I noted it as IP over there, the inflection point splits the graph up into two sections. So we have this section, which we call concave down, as the graph plans to go downwards. Okay, in this entire section, it's like a sad face parabola, I guess. So that's concave down. And then we have the other section of the graph, which is the opposite. That's just concave upwards. So that's concave upwards. Okay. And we have this inflection point dividing the graph into these two sections. So let's say they were to pose a question to you for which values of x is this graph concave upwards? You would mention these x values. So you could say it's all the x values that is greater than the inflection point, or at least the x value at the inflection point, which in this case is the 4 over 3. And if they reverse the question, for which values of x is the graph concave down? you would reference these x values. So all the x values less than the inflection point. Or again, just the x value for the inflection point. Well, that's because they're asking you for which x values. So 
your answer will consist of x values right um, now just for the standard questions uh, just briefly want to talk about it sometimes they ask you for which values of x is the graph um, greater than zero then you would simply look at the portion of the graph that is greater than zero so it's all these x values that's greater than zero as well as these values over here it's this line that's above the x-axis and this curvy line that's also above the x-axis um, you would write this as follows well this is between negative 3 and 2 so you can say all the x values in between negative 3 and 2 and for this one you would say all the x values greater than 5 Again, I'm just going to say if they were to reverse this question and ask you for which values of x is this graph less than 0, it would be these x values and these x values. So all the x values below the x axis. Okay, now again, <laughs> um, let's just write it down. All the x values between 2 and 5, in this case, all the x values less than then negative 3. Now why am I talking about the x-axis being 0? Well because it just is so. At the x-axis y is equal to 0. This is why whenever you want to work out an x-intercept you simply make y equal to 0 because at this line y is 0. Above this line we have answers that is greater than 0. Below this line less than 0. So that's how I could answer the questions like this. Okay, and that's it.